Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shabir Safi and today we are starting a new series on CRDs and operators in Kubernetes. CRDs and operators are more advanced topics. So in this episode, we'll focus on creating and understanding custom resource definition and also understanding their role in Kubernetes. So let's get to it. Let's understand CRDs with an analogy. In any object-oriented programming language, you'd have a set of predefined classes such as string, array, daytime, and so on. But when you're building your application, you'd create hundreds of custom classes that would capture some custom behavior and some custom attributes related to your application. If we compare this with Kubernetes, in Kubernetes, we have predefined resources like pods, deployments, replica sets, and so on, just like predefined classes. But many a times, you need to create some custom resources to capture your application-specific or domain-specific information. So you create a custom resource definition that defines a blueprint or a template for your custom resources, specifying their properties and behavior, just like a custom class. So let's say you have an application and you create a class called certificate, which is a wrapper for TLS certificates. This class would have certain properties like issuer, common name, expiration date, and so on. And you can create many certificate objects using this class definition. So your class acts as a template for your certificate objects. Just like this in Kubernetes, First, you would create a custom resource definition manifest that defines the schema and the structure for your certificate resource. And then you can create individual instances of the certificate resource using this definition. Now, let's try to create our own custom resources and see how to write these manifests. First, let's deploy our local Kubernetes cluster using kind. You can find the link to the GitHub repo that has all the setup scripts and manifest files in the description box below. Uh, execute the create cluster script to initialize the cluster, which will take about a couple of minutes. Okay, now our cluster is ready. Let's open the crd.eml under crds and operators directory, and let's go through it. First, we have the API version that specifies the Kubernetes API being used. For CRDs, we use API extensions.cates.io. Kind is custom resource definition. And before we talk about the metadata and the name, let's look at the group. API groups in Kubernetes are used to categorize and organize resources based on their functionality or purpose. So again, think about them as packages in your object-oriented language, where you'd organize similar classes under a common package name. Then under the name section, we have the singular and plural name of the resource and the kind which we'd use to define the resource. And here we also adding short names that are used as aliases for this resource type, but this is optional, so you can skip it. Okay, so the name has to be the combination of the plural name and the group of your resource. Scope defines whether this resource is limited to a specific namespace or applicable cluster-wide. For instance, resources like pods and deployments are namespaced objects because they are deployed within a namespace, whereas resources like cluster roles or namespace itself are cluster-wide resources in Kubernetes. Under versions, we can define multiple versions of the same resource type. For instance, you may have seen resources that has version name like v1 alpha1, v1 beta1, and so on. And each version can have its own schema and properties. But in this case, we are only defining version v1. The served field represents if a client can request API server to interact with the resource. For example, there are many resources that we can access using kubectl commands like pods, services, ingress objects, and so on. But there are other types of resources that you cannot access through the API server, 
like mutating web hooks or validating web hooks but we want to access our crds through api server uh, therefore we are setting it to true next is storage field this means if a custom resource instances are persisted to the etcd or not so we are going to set it to true all right so under the schema section we use the open api v3 to define the schema of our object so here we have the type as object and under properties we are defining our custom fields or properties for our custom resource so here we have common name as a string type a dns name as an array of string and expiration date and additionally we are setting common name and expiration date as required fields so that's our custom resource definition now we are going to create a custom resource instance so for that let's open the cr instance manifest and let's open them side by side so you, we can compare and look at the properties so this manifest is very simple to understand we have the api version which is the combination of our group name and the version of our resource kind is of tls certificate metadata consisting of user given name and under the spec section we are adding a common name a list of dns names and the expiration date and all these fields need to follow the rule and the convention of our schema definition here okay all we have to do now is deploy these manifests so first let's deploy the crd manifest itself now if we run kubectl get crds we should see our custom resource definition being created great now let's create the new instance of our resource And now we can check by running kubectl get tls certificates and here it is or we can also use the short name so we can do kubectl get crt and there we have it okay guys so this is great we created and deployed our own custom resources but before we wrap this up i wanted to show you a real world example of custom resource here I have an example of a CRD used by Cert Manager. Uh, Cert Manager is a Kubernetes add-on that helps with certificate management within a cluster. And in this CRD, they are defining a certificate object very similar to what we just did. And if you scroll down and look at the properties section, they also have common name, uh, DNS name, and many other properties okay so i really hope you guys have a better understanding of crds now and also realize that it's not too complicated to create your own so that's about it for today's video if you found it useful please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you next time